Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg from Logic Pro Expert. And in this video, I'm going to show you the way that I like to work to create quick chord charts. You don't need to be a score guru to get them looking good. A few simple tips will help you fly through creating chord charts easily. Now, I've got a generic empty project here. I'm going to hit T to bring up the toolbar and go to the pencil tool and just create an empty region. Double hit T and I'm back to the pointer tool and I'll just stretch it out. So now I'm going to hit N to open up the score window and we have a score display here. And I'm going to switch the score style from piano to lead sheet style so we get the slashes. And I'm going to turn off the auto resizing and then go into page view so we can see it like that. So here are the steps to get started. For text, choose chord root to start with and put on lyric mode. Now there are different ways of doing this, but again, this is the way I like to work. You need to use the text tool to do this. So what I like to do is set the text tool as the alternate tool here, and then I can just hold the command key to quickly get it. So what you want to do is hold down option with the text tool to enter chords in chord mode, and they'll be tied to the positions in the bar due to lyric being enabled here. So I'm going to hold down command and option at the same time. So command gives me the text tool and option is putting me in chord entry mode. Click there and I'll type it in. So let's say, for example, I'm going to type G7. I'm going to hit tab and that'll advance me to the next slash. Keep hitting tab and you can move forward one slash at a time. So simply enter the root note and a number for the extension. And you see the flashing cursor here, which indicates that we're still in text entry mode. So you don't need to use the mouse anymore. You can continue typing. So for example, I'll write C7, tab, and then move again. Now, let's say you want to make things a bit more complex. Let's say you want a bass note. All you need to do is hit a slash after the chord root and then the bass note. So I can hit G and then maybe a slash and then B. And I'm hitting capitals. So I'm getting capital letters. And that's G over B, tab, tab again. Now, let's say I want to enter a quality for the chord. Let's say I want to write C minor 7 or C major 7. When you put a letter before the number, the letter is on the bottom. So if I write F, and then let's say M for minor and then 7. I'm going to get F minor 7 with the M on the bottom. And maybe I want to type B flat major 7. So I'm going to go capital B and then small b for the flat symbol. And then MAJ and then 7. And hit tab. And because the number came after the letters, it'll appear on top. And I'm going to hit tab again to get to the beginning of the next bar. Now everything after the number that we add is going to be on the upper level of the chord display. So let's say I'm going to write C7 and then I'm going to do space and open bracket, sharp 11, close bracket. And if I hit tab, you'll see that that all appears on the top. Now let's say we want to get that sharp 11 appearing on the bottom. Well, we can use a comma to force certain parts of the entry onto the lower line. So when we put a comma, everything before the comma is on the lower line. So we see the text cursor flashing. Now let's say you exit this mode because you want to make some other changes. Maybe you want to move something or you want to double click it to edit it and you need to go back in. Just do the same thing and command click to get the text tool and hold down option and click again where you want. And it doesn't matter if you're not lined up exactly at the same horizontal and vertical position because we can align them after. In fact, I'll click a little bit higher so it's deliberately off but I'm at the position of 911. So let's try the comma entry. So I'm going to go C and then space, sharp 11, and then comma. So it's going to force that sharp 11 on the bottom, space, space, 7. And I'll hit tab and we see it like that. Now let's say I don't like the exact look of that. I want to move the 7 over a bit. I'm going to double click on it to open up the edit window and then just click in there and put another space in and that'll line it up properly. So now let's say I want to line all these up. I'm going to select all similar objects under Edit. Let me select one of the chord symbols so it knows what is going to be similar to what. And I'll go Select Similar Events. Now they're all selected. And in the Key Commands window, I've typed in a line. We have options to align objects vertically, horizontally, or just a global align objects that'll do both at the same time. And I have that assigned to shift escape. So let me use that key command, shift escape, and boom, it's lined them all up so they're all lined up. You can see here the vertical position and the horizontal position. Now let's say we want to change the look 
of these chords. I'm going to go under Layout and go to Text Styles, and I'm going to click Chord Root to open up the font picker. And I want to change the font, so I'm going to go to Favorites. I've got one stored that I like, but you can, of course, scroll in your list and find whichever font you want. But I'm going to go to Favorites, and I have Marker Felt Thin. So I just select it, and you can see it's changed already. And now I want to change the chord extension to maybe the same thing, but a smaller version. So I'll click that again, and then just choose a smaller size here. And then close that up, and we have chord symbols using that font. So those are the basics. There's a lot more little tweaking we can do, of course. But you don't have to be a score guru to get some simple, quick chord charts done. This is Eli Kranzberg for Logic Pro Expert, signing out. Thank <laughs> you.